Hello and welcome to Controller Foo Self-Guided At-Home Restorative Body Work at EGX Digital 2020. I'm your host, Tiffany Otto. Forgive the echo, I'm on remote. If you're not here for Controller Foo, that's totally fine. Stay a while and release some of your aches and pains with us. This play-along workshop is designed by a team of best-in-class self-care experts and actual physical therapists that work with professional esports teams, game developers, and actual gamers in real life. We'll be going through a series of exercises and stretches together today to help relieve the inevitable side effects of work from home and play from home life. Having said that, while some of the people on this panel are actual medical professionals, none of us are your medical professionals. As always, please consult with your doctor or a licensed medical practitioner before beginning any new diet or exercise regime. Without further ado, here are the people we will be learning from. Kate, take it away. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Kate McGee. I'm a physical therapist. I've been doing esports physical therapy for about five years now, uh, along with my colleague, Matt. Um, I'm the co-owner of 1HP. We are a team of physical therapists, uh, kinesiologists, athletic trainers, and chiropractors offering health and wellness care um, for everybody from casual weekend gamers to top tier competitors. And our whole goal is to help you play more and hurt less. Awesome, Matt, on to you. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Matthew Hu. As Kate said, I'm the founder of 1HP, and I've been working in esports for the past five years now with uh, quite a few professional teams to help them learn how they can play more and hurt less, in addition to everything that we've done together to help the gaming community live well and game well. Perfect. Alana, you're up. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Alana Linaire. I'm the founder of Team Toad House. We're an indie game studio. I personally am a self-care consultant for the industry, which typically means I go into small indie studios and organizations and make sure that they've got best practices when it comes to self-care and mental health in their foundation and in their code of conduct. Very anti-crunch culture, things of that nature. So I'm here more for the mental health and human part of things. Awesome. Last but not least, myself. My name's Tiffany Otto. I'm the director of IndieCade. Uh, that's, well, I'm director of partnerships for IndieCade. That's the Sundance of video games. I'm here because I'm not very good at exercise and I figured I could use some professional coaching. I'll be modeling the exercises today. This panel is pre-recorded because it's 2020, but we'll be in chat wherever it's airing live to answer any questions you have. So please feel free to reach out in the chat box on whatever platform they put this on. Um, so also while we're working to, <laughs> hey, it's real. While we're working today, uh, my right hand and right foot have a pink wristband on them so that I remember which is which and you can replicate the exercises better at home. So please feel free to follow along. And if you're following along at home, grab the following items, a towel, a hand towel or a bath towel will work perfectly fine. I have one here, it's pink like my couch, but grab yours. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy quote here, but I'm sure Kate will handle that. <laughs> Next up is a sturdy book. Paperback, hardcover, doesn't matter. I'll be using hardback because I can't be trusted with paper, I spill coffee on it, but a magazine or a pamphlet or a zine, God forbid, won't work in this case. In addition, grab a jar or glass water bottle. Something sturdy, something circular, something that you can use in lieu of that $40 phone roller you didn't buy on Amazon this week. Now, onto the exercises. Tell me guys, what am I, what am I doing next? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, the first exercise that we're going to be doing is called a chair chin tuck. And that's because you're going to be doing it right in your chair. If you can, scoot that chair back a little bit and you're just going to have a seat. Have a nice little seat in the chair. And all we're going to be doing, I'm going to ask you to make a double chin. So if I'm looking at you from the side, I'm going to ask that you bring your head back and you're going to make this very attractive double chin for everyone and what this is going to do is help us fix what we commonly see in gamers as forward head it strengthens our deep neck muscles it also stretches some muscles at the base of our skull right over here and it can either be done with your hands as caitlin is showing right now or without your hands and for people that have a higher back chair and can see my screen you can even use the back of the chair to provide that point of contact where your hands would be in order to help you make that double chin. So can you give me a little more instruction on where to place my hands? Yes. So where you're going to be placing your hands is going to be, you're going to first interlock your fingers. You're going to place it at the top of your head, behind your head. 
and then using that as a point to push yourself into that great double chin position. If you look yes. really silly while doing this exercise, you're doing it right. Exactly. <laughs> So this can be done in two ways. It can either be done as a full stretch, holding it for 20 to 30 seconds at a time. And when you're doing that, you should feel it in the back of your neck, along the base of your skull, as I had mentioned, or you can do it as a strengthening exercise for the muscles deep in your neck. And remember, yep, you're, you're not actually looking down. You're bringing your chin or head back and you're holding each repetition for about five seconds. So stretch or strengthening. It's up to you. It's multi I love this because it's something that you can do while you're waiting for your next match. Like in Fall Guys or in Overwatch, I yeah. love mm -hmm. movements that you can just put into your gaming situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, 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 it's one's really easy to work in while you're working too, especially when you start to get that like tightness along the back of your neck when you've been sitting a little bit hunched for too long. This helps you kind of reset your posture. So, so if I'm we're going to yeah. follow rectally, where should I feel mm -hmm. it? Would it be here? It should actually be at the base of your skull, closer to the top of your neck. Yeah. Right over there. So your hands are going to be placed a little higher at the top. Yeah, there we go. And then you assume that chin tuck position and then apply a little bit of that pressure so you're stretching those muscles at the top of your neck or base of your skull. <laughs> so it's... Okay. Is the is the giggle saying yes? I feel it there, or maybe not. Well, I def I definitely had my form incorrect the first time, so uh -huh. I'm glad it's working better now. Uh, Thank but you for being an excellent model for our audience who can now learn the right way to do it. Good job. Right. <laughs> it's first, a mood. It's an absolute mood. All right. First so uh, step of being really good at something towel. is being terrible at it. So don't worry about it, Tiffany. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and grab that lovely pink towel that you've got next. Excellent. But uh, if you in the audience do not have a lovely pink towel, it's okay. Any color of towel will do just fine. Um, you do not have to fold your towel in any particular fashion. I honestly just kind of like swirl mine up because I'm lazy. Efficient. I'm efficient. That's what I'm doing. You're going to loop your towel around your neck like this. And it's really important to note that when you're doing this particular exercise, what I don't want is I don't want any pressure on the sides of your neck. That's a really great way of like cutting off your carotid artery and not being able to breathe. Um, neither of those are things that you want. So instead, you want the line of the towel to go along the line of your jaw. I'm going to take my left hand and crisscross. There you go. And then I'm going to lock it down with my right hand. My left hand is going to do all the work. I'm not using my neck muscles to turn my head. I'm just using my left hand to pull my neck along, get a nice little stretch right along here, and then rotate back. You're just going to pull mm. over. Hold for five seconds. Come on back to the middle. This one you want to do about 10 on each side. Your goal is only to go to the point where you're feeling a nice gentle stretch, not to the point you feel any kind of like sharp pain in your neck. If you're feeling sharp pain, you've gone too far. And when you stretch to the other Should side, make sure you switch your hands. Should I be engaging my neck muscles while I do this stretch? Helping it along? Not. They should be nice and relaxed. Neck gets to be lazy, arms do all the work. And we have to balance both sides, right? It's probably a bad plan if I do like 20 on one side and one on the other. That's why I'm saying do 10 on one, then do 10 on the other. Just make sure when you switch sides, you switch which hand is pulling. Uh, if you're trying to pull to the right with your left hand, you're gonna have a harder time. Hmm. These are great because when life feels chaotic, it's very difficult to find something that you can, can control and something that like everyone's got a towel at home, hopefully. So something simple <laughs> like this that oh, you can <laughs> do, go, you can do something good for yourself, which will make you feel a little bit more control and a little bit more at ease when life's a little chaotic. Absolutely. And that's why we want to do this with all kinds of at home stuff. Uh, the next object you're going to need at home is your book. Um, if you are seriously lacking in the book department, um, let me know. I've got extras. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> you could if you had to use um, rolled up towel instead, but really having something with nice square edges will be best. Could I'm you use like an Xbox sometimes. game case? You could absolutely use an Xbox game case. Um, 
Nintendo you could Switch. Probably use, if you've got any uh, DVD cases, I don't know if people still have DVDs. DVD I still do. cases. Very nice. <laughs> and VHS for anyone to watch it. Oh, watching. God. VHS would actually work even better. <laughs> oh, and Flappy oh, Land, too. Well, no, I, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm don't, kidding. don't be ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I have, I have a copy. I have a hardback copy of Atari to Zelda, Japan's Video Games and Global Context by the MIT Press. Uh, so it's, a, it's about an inch ish, maybe just under an inch. Mine is the history of floppy disks. Gigantic book. Does it? It's right in production. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one edge of the book and lock it against the kind of base of your skull. Good. Mm -hmm. You're gonna use either your hands or the chair to keep it in place. I'm gonna use the chair to kind of lock it in here. And remember that chin tuck motion we just did about oh two minutes ago. You're going to do yes. a little bit of that chin tuck again. You're ah. going to feel the edge of the book kind of pressing into that region right at the base of your skull. Wow. That particular region is known as your suboccipital triangle. It's a small little triangle of muscles that's pretty tight in most of us who have any amount of stress, which like, hey, there's a global pandemic happening. It's a little bit stressful right now. Um, normally, um, it's it's easiest to get those muscles to release with somebody else kind of hooking their fingers in and giving a little bit of a pull. For those of us who live by themselves, uh, like me, uh, having something around that you can do this self-release with um, is really useful for, especially when you start to get that headache -y pressure feeling in your neck and the base of your skull. Um, so just leaning back, tucking your chin a little bit, letting it rest against that book, that's going to give you a suboccipital release. So it should help with headaches. Hold it for about 30 seconds. You can also do this laying down uh, if that's a little bit easier for you. Um, but the goal of it is just a little bit of pressure right here. Sink your head down against it. I feel like so you guys Tiffany, just want to make stupid feeling? faces. Uh, honestly, uh, you probably make stupid faces, yes. Honestly, my neck is feeling great, Matt. Uh, I'm a little <laughs> salty that I didn't know this stuff back in March when I had to, you know, stop seeing people like chiropractors because plague. But this is great. I've, uh, as, as I was told too, I've put the uh, spine of the book into the big fancy science word for back of my neck. And <laughs> I'm uh, yes. making, making spine awkward to spine. Snapchat face. Spine to spine, I like that. Spine to spine contact. Yep. <laughs> I want to try it with my, I want to try it with my Switch because- Go we, for it. We did promise, um, now obviously make sure you have the insurance plan and or a case yeah. on your Switch yeah, exactly. because good luck Be getting nice. another one. <laughs> But for those I of you watching you at home, in the carrying case, then um, yeah, true, carrying case, right? Carry oh, that that so you don't scratch that screen. I don't know what you're talking about. I wear protective screens on my screens because I like screens. Got it, got it. Make I'm sure really you can turn it on afterward case. too. Yeah. By the way, can you showcase? Oh, that I'll, I'll, have, I'll have a lot of emotions okay. if my Animal Crossing can't oh, hang out with me right. after. So yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Nintendo eShop active. What's next, guys? Right. What, what do I need to do? So next, we're gonna move on to the back because we covered the neck. Your neck is feeling great. Look at that. It's perfect. Okay. And now we're gonna shift to getting some mobility for our mid back because, as all of us have done, we're probably sitting for a long time because of the quarantine, and our back gets a little stiff. So. What I'm going to need you to do is turn the chair over facing either side to your right or left. Mm -hmm. And Kate's actually going to help us demonstrate in the chair how you can do this. But the goal is to get a little bit of a twist in your mid back. So you're going to stand behind the chair and we're going to shift it over just so you're in the center. Perfect. And we're going to be twisting to either side. So if we are twisting to the left, we're going to have your left leg forward, your right leg behind you. Both feet mm -hmm. flat on the ground. You're going to maintain your right hand in contact with the chair. And it could be a chair of different heights. And we're also going to show the demonstration of this video of myself performing it too. Not saying that Tiffany isn't doing it yeah. perfectly, but you know, we want to demonstrate both. I want to showcase. Matt both. has better lighting than me. That's why. <laughs> oh, yes. I guess so. And so in this, in this position, what you're going to be doing is maintaining your torso upright 
and then rotating to the left the foot that's in front that's the direction of, of where you're going to be rotating you're going to try to get all the way around behind you as far as you can so twist your torso try to really get all the way so that your shoulders are really facing the cam webcam now so that you can really get that twist and you should be feeling this in your mid back and just yeah. like the chin tuck exercise this could be done in a stretch or in repetitions so you can either hold it for 20 to 30 seconds at the end on either either side right just like that or you can perform them in repetitions trying to get a little further every single time and what we don't want to see is kind of tilting in your hip we don't want to see you know lifting up we don't want to see your arm just moving back and your torso not twisting we want to see that it's all coming from your mid back or your actual torso does and that have the w a s d muscles the arrow <laughs> like these things right here so it um, actually so much that your pec muscles as some of our next stretches will mm -hmm. this one is more designed for your back and if you are um if if standing is not a good option for you this can also be done sitting just using your armrests to give you that little bit of extra pull as you rotate does it matter my where my weight is on my front or back foot? And does it matter if my neck follows me? So great question. You can definitely let it follow you to help assist in the overall rotation of your mid back to neck, or you can keep it facing forward. And what that does is it locks your lower body and your upper, your neck so that you're only rotating through your mid back. So it's a way to isolate it. If you maintain your head facing forward, the other, the the real forward, <laughs> the non like towards the forward. chair. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There we go. Yeah, that way it isolates your mid back. So there's two ways that you can do it. If you want to get more global or large scale mobility from your mid back into your neck, then you can look with your hands. If you want to isolate your mid back. You can just keep your head facing forward. And as you asked, if you, as long as you keep your weight shifted evenly between feet, that's fine. We're just trying to have a stable base for you to do this exercise. I feel yeah. all the tension I've gotten playing Fall Guys this week go away. Good, good. <laughs> I need so that. This, so these are, these are great, right? Because we're obviously sitting playing Fall Guys, spamming it until we get the crown and, or until we win. But it's actually a good way for us to get up, get some blood flowing, and actually help a little, a lot, not just a little bit, a lot with the stiffness uh, in our back. It allows us to do everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, and our moods, like any bit of s small movement like this, it's such a big mood booster. Absolutely. Okay. Starting to work up a sweat doing all these exercises. <laughs> good. I might Thank also you, Weepa Trainer. Your, uh, air conditioning off so that it wouldn't be drowning out your webcam. There's that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is true, and it's summer. You're All in right. LA. So, so the well, next exercise, guys? we're going to use the fake desk, which is your beautiful pink your couch. Or, oh, actually, no, we'll, we'll use uh, we'll use the back of your chair because that's actually a really great option. Yeah, and you're still going to be facing it away from you, which is perfect in that same position. Yep. And in this exercise, what you're going to be doing is. You're actually going to have your knees on the ground and make sure you have the same towel that you might have used for the next neck exercises or any sort of cushions. You can pat it underneath your knees so that it's not uncomfortable. And you're actually going to shift a little further away from the chair. Yeah, because what we're trying to do is you're going to maintain your hands straight, contact into the chair, and then lean forward in so that your arms are coming up overhead. You should feel the stretch in your mid back. So you're actually going to lean your entire body into the chair. Yep. And this one can also be done sitting. Um, so let me demo here. So Tiffany, move all the way back a little further back. Yeah, there we go. So your elbows are going to stay straight and then you're going to keep your torso straight, chest up, and then you lean forward so that your shoulders come to where your ears are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there we go. So if you if you see how Kate's doing it, just like that. So letting oh, your torso so it's like come. You draw. Through. Exactly. And then you bring so you your draw chest through, through your arms. 
Exactly. You drop through your arms. And this, as you can tell, helps to bring your spine into what we call extension or a more upright position, which is the opposite of what we often do here. It limits breathing. It makes us look a lot shorter than we are. It doesn't give us confidence, you know, mm -hmm. versus the opposite where we're in this power position. Our chest is up. Our spine is upright. A this great is... stretch for before a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. Oof. If you're, and so, if you're someone who has a little bit of impaired mobility in your hands, you can also do this on your desk by locking your elbows on. So I'm just going to scoop back, put my elbows on the desk, and same idea, lean right through. Exactly. So it's a great modification. Exactly. Now, is there anything uh, I could be doing that would injure myself potentially while doing this? For example, twisting my neck in a weird position or having my torso at a strange angle before going in or favoring one limb or the other. I know that when doing anything from yoga to Tai Chi to physio, there's opportunities to re-injure yourself. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the overhead position, I would say it's important to not overly lean on your shoulders. You can actually um, think about slightly pressing into whatever surface you're using, the desk, the couch, the chair, so that it uses some of your shoulder muscles, and then that helps you isolate your mid back a little more. In that way, we're not compressing the shoulder joint at the very top of that movement. So it's similar so in general, to the yoga pose where you pop up and down. It is a little bit like downward dog, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's exactly. also important to keep in mind that with all of these stretches, you should only be going as far as feels like a gentle kind of stretchy feeling. You should not be going so far you feel sharp pain. If you're feeling sharp pain, you've pushed too far. Exactly. In the event that I push too far, what can I do to mitigate that? Back not off. Not push as far. <laughs> know your limits. <laughs> yep. Back off and take some rest. All right, we've got our next back stretch coming up. And this one's a, calling it a back stretch is a bit of a misnomer. It's designed to help with your back, but it's actually a hip stretch. Um, the reason hip stretches help your back is because your hips and pelvis are really closely integrated with your low back. Uh, so tightness in your low back can also be tied in with tightness in your hips. For those of us who are sitting for long periods of time, our hips are bent. So you want to give your hips some time where they're extending, where they're opened up. Uh, so for this one, you'll be standing. I'm going to stand between my desk and my chair. You can also just stand at your desk or your chair. With this one, I'm going to be in a lunging position, one foot forward, one foot back. doesn't matter which foot is forward. The important part is that each foot will get a turn. Uh, and Tiffany, you're probably going to want that chair next to you so you're not having to lean forward to reach to it, but instead can just mm -hmm. place your hand on the side. For balance. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. Good. So for this one, step one foot forward, one foot back. So for those of you one... viewing at home and playing along, I put my right foot forward first, um, uh, my left foot back first. Yep. So the important part with this one isn't so much how much your front knee bends. It's about pushing that back hip down and forward, kind of on a diagonal towards the floor. I should be feeling the stretch right across the front of my hip and maybe down a little bit into the front of my thigh. You can get more stretch out of this by leaning your torso upright and a little bit backwards. You're going to hold on to this stretch for about 30 seconds. This should feel like a really nice release of all that tension that sits right here when you're sitting bent for a long period of time. Make sure that both legs get a turn so you feel nice and balanced. And Keep should going. my... Feet be shoulder width apart when I start this stretch? Shoulder width is a little bit wider than shoulder width is, is going to be your best start. Um, again, it doesn't matter how much you push forward with your knee. It really matters more how much you push your back hip down and forward towards the floor. Uh, and a modification that you can do while sitting in a chair, rather than um, being in a lunge position, scooting over to the side letting your leg hang off a little bit, letting your foot catch on the floor, and again, just shifting forward until you feel that stretch across the front of your thigh. It's almost like you're doing a lunge, except you're sitting while you do it. Oh, I like this because I'm lazy. <laughs> you're efficient. That's what you are. Yep. 
you're effective. Yes. This is my most common position whilst sitting. <laughs> you are spending your hips there. <laughs> so right, now that next? we've gone over the back, we the we're back. now we're moving the towards shoulder. the shoulder. Yeah, we're moving towards the shoulder. And in this exercise, we're going to be helping those WASD muscles that Alana mentioned. And Alana Banana mentioned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what you're going to be doing is a stretch that will directly help the front of your chest on either side. And you're going to be standing perpendicular to your couch, to your table. You're going to be facing to the side. And we can move the chair over a little bit. And in order to stretch the right side, you're going to have your left leg behind you right leg in front right and then you're going to have your right arm behind you gripping so the couch or walk your hand all the way back yep just like that and for those that are using a desk you can use the corner of the desk using your palm to actually come into contact to the corner and we'll have that be demonstrated in the video uh, where i'm doing it as well and all you're going to be doing is keeping your elbows straight twisting through your torso to the left so this is stretching your right side as you twist your torso you should feel it on the right chest also going down into the right arm this helps with that rounded shoulder position that we often see a lot of gamers in whether they tilt their keyboard left keyboard hand in or if they tend to move the mouse uh, internally a lot because of how they're positioning things so this helps to stretch that area out. Should Opening I imagine up. long sessions of coding as well, right? Just like yes. sitting at the keyboard, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you should be holding this for about 20 to 30 seconds at a time. And then you can slowly ease off of it. As Kate always says, you never want to go to the point where it's sharp. If you've gone there, it's too far. You want to go to the point of mild discomfort, a mild to moderate stretch, and then you hold it. Yes. When so we think I, of the stereotype, oh, I was going to say when you think of the stereotype of a gamer, you don't think that you need to do stretches for gaming, but it makes you, especially if you're going for professional, it makes your career last longer. It makes your body last longer. It makes that you can game for your entire life instead of just the typical, like stereotypical teenager that we think of. And as well as when you're creating games and coding stuff, if you want a long game development career, you sh this is like so great for just longevity reasons. So if I'm doing my other side, I'm going to flip, correct? Yep. So you'll swap. And it's so really important that you I'm... maintain your torso upright as you're twisting too, to really ensure that you're just isolating at that left front of your chest and the arm. So left foot forward, right foot back. Mm -hmm. And then Creep my walk that left hand, hand behind backwards. You. Uh -huh, maintain uh -huh. torso straight. Bring right hand up. Yep. Move That's to camera. Nice. Exactly. Exactly. And now should I be, you, oh, sorry. It's all right. I'm demonstrating a modification that you can do from a chair. Um, I'm just using my forearm against the back of my armrest. Um, and on the opposite side, I'm using my hand to pull me forward a little bit more. I'm getting that same stretch across the front of my chest and the front of my shoulder. Um, I'm just doing it in a slightly more seated fashion. That feels good. And nice. when, yeah. When I do this, you mentioned holding. Should I pulse for a more intense stretch or could I damage myself that way? I'd prefer that you just hold um, as longer duration holds are more shown to make a change in the actual length of the tissue. So yeah, actually getting the stretch versus pulsing it. Right. Pulsing it does put you at a little bit higher injury risk. That bouncing means that it's a little bit less controlled. Slow sustained hold means it's more controlled, less likely to cause injury. Awesome. The next one we'll be moving through for shoulders. We are going to need that towel again. Grab your handy dandy towel. No, you are not getting ready to get off planet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to throw your towel over your shoulder. I'm going to talk through this first, then I'm going to demo it. You're going to hold the top of the towel with one hand. Let's say we'll hold the top of the towel with the right hand. You're going to hold the bottom of the towel with the left hand. It's kind of like you're trying to pull up your pants from behind. That's the position your hand's going to be in. You're then going to use your top hand to pull that bottom hand up a little bit. We've got a stretch in the front of your shoulder in the left side. 
Should my thumb be up or down? Thumb uh. should be up. Thumb should be pointing towards your head. Could you show the whole motion from like down and then you pulling up? I just wanted to talk through it first. So now I'm going to demonstrate what I just talked through. Mm -hmm. Ah. Um, and as with all of our stretches, you should be holding these for about 20 to 30 seconds for this particular stretch. Uh, singing the chorus of Dear Chain Hang Low and Replacing Chain with Towel should do the trick. I love a good pop culture reference. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're, if, <laughs> so if you're playing along at home, we just had our right hand in front and now we're going to have our left hand in front for the second set as Kate mentioned. So take your towel. Swing it over your left shoulder this time. Put your left hand, gripping it like a satchel of some sort. And then take your right hand with your thumb up on the back. And like Kate said, uh, I believe you pull with your left hand to stretch your right arm, correct? Got it. And keep in mind, again, you should only be pulling as far as feels like a comfortable stretch for you. For you is going to be different than for your best friend. For you is also going to be different from day to day and even hour to hour, depending on how long you've been sitting, how tight you are, how recently you've moved, how well hydrated you are. So don't force yourself to a particular range just because you know you've gotten there before. Go where your body is telling you right now is okay. Speaking of hydration, everyone drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> Alana, aren't you a little bit infamous for having a Hydrobot on your channel? Yes, I am. Waterbot, we all obey Waterbot, and Waterbot <laughs> controls our lives and lets us know we have to drink, and it's quite often. Waterbot gets a little <laughs> antsy if we ignore Waterbot. <laughs> so, for those, of us who, for those of us in the audience who don't follow you yet on Twitch, can you explain a bit about Waterbot and why you set them up the way you did? Yeah, hundred percent. So part of something that like I, I have our every hour I have a five minute break and then I also have water box and those are two of the many things that I do to make sure that it's just a wellness focused community, especially when we're watching Twitch streams. Often you can sit there and you you don't realize how often you're how long you've been sitting watching a Twitch stream or how long you've been sitting in gaming. So by breaking it up and having it gamified and having it automatic. So using bots for timers and such means when water bot pops up, I do not have control over it. I need to follow it. And just making that a rule that, nope, water bot says so. So we obey water bot. You take a sip of water, whether you want to or not. Um, obviously, you know, if for medical reasons you can't, but the cheekiness aside. Um, and then every hour having a break where I remind my community, all right, it's been an hour, you're a human do some stretches, get some water, use the bathroom, breathe, go look at the sun. Vitamin D is great. Just five minutes every hour to move your human body as well as stimulating your mind makes a huge difference, not only in my community's well-being and overall gamer well-being, but in my well-being as a streamer and as a game developer. I find I, I'm, I'm much better I'm much more fresh and my ideas are better and I can troubleshoot more easy and I don't get so snippy if chat's being cheeky, et cetera, if I take these breaks. And Kate, I saw recently online, you were talking with another medical professional in the gaming field about a rule you use to talk about um, increases in stats, for lack of a better term, using stuff yeah. like drinking water. That's that's the 70 20 10 performance rule. I was talking about it with a uh, gamer doc um, who's also a, a medical professional in esports. So the 70 20 10 rule says that 70% of your gains in performance are going to come from building up the basics. So having adequate nutrition, adequate hydration, adequate sleep, moving enough and moving in the right ways, uh, moving consistently, uh, kind of all of those basic building blocks that we tend to take for granted all of the fancy cryo machines and compression sleeves and braces and supplements in the world are going to do absolutely nothing to improve your performance if you're not addressing those basics first. All those bonuses, they only help if you've got the basics down. And 100%. Alana, you, you've mentioned before about one of the basics being mental health as well. And I, if I remember correctly, you have a client that actually you make go outdoors during COVID. Can you explain that for people? <laughs> 
at home. Because... That sounds so terrible. It's walking. It's walking. It's going for walks. You make you him make go outside him into COVID. Go outside <laughs> into exposure situations. It is wonderful to get sunlight during sunlight hours if you're trying to reset your rhythms. It's very difficult because time doesn't make any sense anymore. So by using the actual sun and by using the seasons and by going for walking, particularly if pre-COVID you were used to commutes and you were used to having these breaks between your work life and your after work life, if you go for, say you had a 20 minute commute, well now you still have a 20 minute commute, but instead of driving in your car listening to your podcast, you're going to go for a walk and listen to your podcast i have one person who literally just goes outside his door and he takes a deep breath in he unlocks his door and he goes back in and that's all the break that he needs to kind of switch but we do need to switch we need to keep games with games work with work especially in the gaming industry when we're all friends and everything feels like fun and we want to keep going that's why crunch is so prevalent it's very it's not very often that crunch is a person behind you with a whip telling you to keep working it's that we're excited and we love that what we do and we want to keep going and we want to like well if i do this maybe the code will work or if i do this maybe i can get that last little speed run and we need to that's why I like use bots. We need to put it outside of ourselves to make sure that we're maintaining the human form. Yep. So exercises like the ones that Matt and Kate have been taking us through today, would you recommend this to something like this to your clients as like a hundred percent matches? Pause. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love everything that they've shown so far. I want to see more. <laughs> right. And speaking of that, now we've done a pause. What's next? <laughs> we're we're going to do one more shoulder stretch and then we'll be getting into some hand stuff. Cool. Uh, for this shoulder stretch, you're going to need your chair. Um, you can turn your chair to the side so people can see you. And uh, this, in this stretch, I'm going to date myself a little bit with this reference, but you're going to channel your inner flash dancer here. Um, what you're going to do, hands are going to be on your armrests. Your hands are actually going to be facing backwards. So rather than pointing towards the front of you, they're pointing towards the back of the chair. You're going to plant your feet on the floor and just lift your chest up. You should feel a nice stretch for your back. Should your neck hang like she does in the movie? You actually don't want to throw your neck back quite that much. Throwing your neck back kind of gets a real pinchy feeling in the back here. Um, instead, you want to do that chin tuck that we did at the very beginning. So as you're going ah. up, your neck is staying neutral because you're doing that chin tuck. So the not 80s modifier for this is ugly Snapchat selfie instead of traction for your neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and you can also do this one just sitting by placing your hands on the back of your chair and lifting your chest up and forward. So it's Again, pretty key to have controlled movements when doing these exercises, not just fling yourself around your living room. Exactly. Slow and controlled is the name of the game with these. <laughs> Come on, I've been playing too much Just Dance during quarantine. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I mean, I don't right. know about you. I, I control myself when I'm dancing, so. <laughs> so you're flinging. So you're flinging. Is that what you're saying? Okay. It's modern interpretations, Matt. It's modern art. Okay. All right. All right. Our last round of exercises is specifically for hands and forearms, which is probably the stuff that people are most interested in. Uh, yep. Matt. Everyone, Matt, don't you have a viral video jar. about this? Don't you have a I viral might. video? I might. You've got like five. I might not. I might not. But okay, so I got what my jar. we need here now is a jar. Everyone grab your jar, preferably made out of glass. And there's two ways that we can do this. What we're aiming to do is using this jar or firm tool. It could even be our controller or a water bottle. We're going to perform some self-massage, and that's going to help to <laughs> facilitate some recovery or relax overly contracted muscles that we use so much as developers, programmers, gamers, or people that just spend a lot too much time in front of screens. So what we're going to be doing is focusing today on targeting the muscles that we utilize to type or move our fingers around. And that's going to be on the palm side of your forearm. And what I want Tiffany to do is she's going to scoot back a little bit. I'm going to be demonstrating in, the, in my video on the table, but Tiffany's going to be demonstrating this with her lap. So she's going to place her forearm on her lap, resting it just as shown, and then she's going to use her awesome Vegemite jar 
and then put it not sideways sponsored. like this. <laughs> no, we're not sponsored, but Vegemite, yeah. We're talking to you, Kraft Foods. We would love that. <laughs> All we're doing is applying pressure and slowly rolling from the elbow to the forearm because that's where the muscle starts and ends. So we're going to be rolling towards our hand, moving slowly along it. And you can take 45 to 60 seconds or a full minute to do this, stopping where you might feel, hey, there's a little bit of soreness here, hanging out there a little bit, allowing some of your muscles to just relax and calm down after using it for four to six hours, six to eight hours, however many hours you're typing or on the computer for. So and if you're using the WASD keys, is that what is that what we're fixing right now? Exactly. Yes. So the WASD keys, the muscles actually start along the forearm here. There are definitely some that we're going to get to in your actual hand later, but a lot of them were the key ones that we're targeting are actually in the palm side of the forearm. So you can either do it in the way that you're showing right now, or we can place the actual jar on the table or your lap in this case, and then just apply pressure and roll on it. Roll from so, the elbow to the wrist. So a, exactly. uh, an equivalent of this that I've seen in physical therapy offices would be a foam roller, right? Would you use a foam roller traditionally if you wanted to invest in equipment as opposed to jars of Vegemite? You absolutely can, and you yeah. can get them for like 12 bucks on Amazon. Exactly. I think the Amazon basic version of a foam roller is, is about $12 right now. It's the size. Yep. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> oh, I just fun. happened to have it. <laughs> it's amazing it's how the physical therapist has one. <laughs> I know. But it's great that we have the jars because since March, anything that has to do with bread making or being active has been sold out absolutely everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really do. If you have gotten into bread making, you've probably figured out that kneading takes a lot of arm and hand strength. This is also good <sighs> for those of you out there exactly. who've started learning how to make sourdough. <laughs> I love it. 2020, the only time where a Nintendo <laughs> Switch, a jar of Vegemite, a loaf of sourdough, and potential <laughs> carpal tunnel in your future all make sense together. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'm really feeling this. I think I do too many fine motor things with my right hand. And that's my mouse probably. hand. That's you play a lot of indie hand. games. Yep. <sighs> We're going to yes, follow that self massage up with some stretching as well. This is probably the stretch that everybody's seen before, but I'm going to show you some ways to do it using your workspace. So the version of the stretch that everybody knows is this one, right? Arm out in front of you, pulling your hand back. Yes. You can, however, be super duper efficient and do this with both hands at the same time on the edge of your desk, as Matt is currently demonstrating. Um, if you are someone who's got some mobility impairments in your hand, you can also use your forearm to lock your hand and stretch that way. Oh, I like that. Yep. You'll get more of a stretch the more you straighten out your elbow. Mm -hmm. um, the version of this that folks don't seem to do as often is the one that stretches the extension muscles. So this one stretches the flexion muscles of your forearm, all the things that do this and that. We also want to stretch, stretch your extension muscles. Extension means going like this, bringing your fingers up. Uh, so in order to do that, you're going to flip your hand over and pull it towards you. You can also, as Matt is demonstrating, lean on your desk to do this. If you're going to lean on the backs of your hands doing this one, most of your weight should be in your feet. You are not leaning very hard on your hands. Uh, if you do that, your wrists are really not going to appreciate it. I feel targeted right. by this relatable content. <laughs> I love this. As with all of the other stretches, you're only going as far as feels good, stretchy, and comfortable that specific day. Yep. And Matt, I think you've got one last stretch for us after this, which is actually yep. my favorite. We have the last stretch. And this is a stretch that stretches the tiny muscles in our hand. Yes. For everyone that wants to know how to say this, it's called the lumbrical stretch. Lumbrical. 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 We'll lumbrical. write that on screen lumbrical. for y'all to Google lumbrical. later. Lumbrical. 
Lumbercore. Lumbercore or Lumbercore. Lumbercore. See, here's the thing that they don't tell you about PT. We have pedantic arguments about the weirdest stuff, like the pronunciation right. of Lumbercore versus Lumbercore. Okay. Doesn't every and industry, you know, like, is what? video games True. one word or two? Who knows? Who cares? Don't, don't start <laughs> 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 Ask people if it's pronounced Malayolus or Maliolus. I don't even know what that word is. Malleolus. It's Maliolus. It's absolutely sure. Maliolus. But okay. people don't know otherwise. <laughs> So on that note, for those of you lumbricol lumbricol stretch, <laughs> yes. we're going to be doing putting your hands into this claw position. Claw it up, just the like claw. this. Put your hands over the claw, protect the claw, and then pull it back away from your palm like this. And you should begin to feel a deeper stretch in between your knuckles here, mm. going down into the actual hand, and you're holding this. 20 to 30 seconds. You don't want to crank it back. I have a lot of mobility here. Look, look at that. You, most of you guys. I have a surprising amount. I have more than expected. Again, like, no sharpness. Dances? Oh, yeah. You know the dances oh. with the fingers? Pada pada! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There is one a of my video best friends that's called. Won a competition. Really? He's one of the best in the world at a certain style of those. <gasps> no way. Did, really did you guys see the Stay Home and Para Para campaign? They made like a special Para Para video for COVID. Really? I haven't. But we should look at it. <laughs> for, for those of you playing along at home, uh, so, you know, you, you begin your move here, and then you make like a claw, claw, like bear claw, like full tech and energy, and you cover it like you're powering up. And then you push backwards gently. And is this a hold one or a pulse one? This is a hold this is one. A hold. And you're holding 20 to 30 seconds, maintaining it, feeling that stretch. And then you can alternate side to side. This is especially great for controller players, especially great for, again, anyone that might grip their mouse or spend, just spend a lot of time on the keyboard because we're using these smaller muscles of our hand to press our fingers down in this direction. Mm -hmm. So it's a fair statement that people in the fighting games community should probably, you know, rewind and rewatch this part of the video. <laughs> yes, yes. They should make a character in every game called the, the Lumbacol Lumbacol or Lumbacol, whatever. Yes. Oh uh, my God. Yeah. 20, 2021 <laughs> submissions for ADK are gonna be so lit. Yeah, exactly. Is there That's a way a nice I should character. be holding my shoulders and torso when I do this stretch? Or is there anything I need to look out for that knows besides sharp pain that I've gone too far or that I'm injuring myself? Is there a, like, can I do this when I'm like slouched over like this? Or is there a particular way I need to make sure that my torso is to make sure I don't hurt myself because I'm playing a lot of fight crab right now and I need to make sure I crab. that that As long as you're not in a strange and awkward position, just sitting upright, putting your arm in front of you, that's fine, just avoiding the sharp, uh, positions where it is sharp, then then we're happy. Then we're all so happy it's not, watching you do it. So it's not a full clench like a punch, it's a curl like a claw. It's a claw. Yeah, yep. yeah. Claw. No laws when you're drinking claws. There are laws. <laughs> Follow the laws. Is it safe to say that as long as our audience chooses two or three to incorporate that small improvements, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to do this whole thing, but just yeah. choosing one or two to go? So this is this is one of those times when uh, I get to use one of my favorite phrases, which is don't let perfect be the enemy of good, um, which is Ooh. to say, ideally, yes, we'd all be using our quarantine time to get like super duper in shape and per perfect our bread making abilities and all that. But look, it's a quarantine during a pandemic. Shit's stressful. Yes, Shit's really stressful. If all you've got like the headspace or the bandwidth for is adding in one or two small things, guess what? Going for a two-minute walk is still better than a no-minute walk. Doing yes. one stretch is still better than a no-stretch. Yes. Yeah. And so if you have some sort of neurodivergency where this is difficult, set timers and put yeah. that outside your brain. Have Waterbot tell you in. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. If you're basically, as long as you're paying attention to what your body is asking for and trying to give it at least one thing that it's asking for every day, you're on a good track. It takes yes. time to make this a habit. Um, it takes uh, six weeks of really kind of continuous effort for a thing to be a super ingrained habit. Um, so until it's a habit, 
like Lana is saying, set timers, give yourself external reminders and be patient with your brain. Because again, there's a pandemic, shit's hard. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Well said. <laughs> exactly. I love this. So was this the, was that the last one? That was the last track. It was. And for those of you, Tiffany. Yeah, I'm going to go play way too many video games. And for those of you who uh, aren't as familiar, uh, Matt and Kate's office has a TikTok. And I believe the one where you explained this went viral. I saw it wandering around Twitter. I am not going to try and pronounce that science word, but we will find a diagram to add to the video <laughs> later. Yes. How um, can they follow you on TikTok? What's your username? You can find us at HP for Gamers. At HP for Gamers, just like my Twitter. And yes. yeah, we, we post daily. Yep. <laughs> I love this. On that note, that's the end for us. We're going to be in chat, as we mentioned earlier in this video, and you can always find us on the internet. I hope you had fun. We all hope you had fun and learned something. You can find us online at Kate. Where can we find you? I'm at Kate McGee PT. Kate is spelled C-A-I-T. Awesome. And Matt, where can we find you online? Twitter and TikTok at HP for gamers. Awesome. And Alana, where can I find you and learn more about your Hydra bot? Uh, Twitter and Twitch. Twitter is Tyboy, T Y B A W A I, and uh, everything Team Toad House. So Team, then T O A D House. We're making Call Me Sarah. Sarah is C E R A. Please play it when it comes out within the next millennia. <laughs> That's all I can and I love it. You can find me on Twitter at Totomatic, T O T T O M A T I C. Thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, sound off in the chat and comments. I'm not sure where this is going to end up. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.